school. And it ain't cool. So we just gonna check it out. Last name is Amitriku, it means I know God. And I'm glad to say that I do. I'm here today to talk about uh, this book here. My name is John Amitriku, as I stated earlier. It's called, It's Perfectly Normal for Students 10 and Up. This book. You see, he said 10 and up. It's like, now, I'm not coming from a parent's point of view when I watch this. In a way, I am. But I'm thinking about when, when I was in school, like when I was a kid. Did I want to be taught a bunch of bull, you know, and then believe it, and then that's supposed to be reality for me and hundreds and thousands of other kids, you know? So it's like, that's the thought I think, like, that's not cool, you know what I mean? But as a parent thought, if, you know, I was in that parent's uh, culture, <laughs> I would have to say, hell no, nah, I'm creating a temple of kids about to learn martial arts. There's going to be all these skills and talents they know. But that's besides the point. My point is, this is not right. Details all kinds of sexual images, pictures of elderly people, nude, pictures of an individual who's in a wheelchair with his penis out. All of these sexual pornographic images are made available and placed at the fingertips of children. And I'm sure Dr. Cruz, I don't know if you knew about this before you signed on, but hopefully this is something that you can address and deal with because this is immoral and asinine to allow children to be able to see this. So he made a good point. Is that immoral? Kids got to know about their reproductive organs and so forth. But I think what makes this bad is the fact that it goes beyond that and it gives you ideas to talk about more sexual things in the classroom that is immoral. Uh, all the kind of sick, perverted stuff people do to, to get pleasure. You know, if you let this into the classroom, then you got the S and M crap and the foot fetish crap and all this nonsense going into the classroom, teaching toddlers uh, how to do ungodly things. And so, the school board is wrong for this because this is how society gets messed up. They're not going in to learn about true facts. They're just hoping to create perversion in the young people even though that's already there in some cases, but they're trying to teach perversion and to make it okay to say and do sexual things around children. Also, this book even shows images of two women having sex, a man and a woman having sex, and two men having sex. That's not perfectly normal. Who decides what's normal? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Is it you? Or do parents decide what should be placed at the fingertips and allowed to be taught to their children in the school system? Now yeah, that's, that's a damn good point. Should the teachers be the only ones that make judgments on what your kids are being taught? Or should your parents do it? The parents should do it. They should come together in a group and think what are the main values that they want all their children to learn. You know, this is something that should happen. And then these teachers are, are paid, qualified to teach that such subject, which is the way this is supposed to go down. But, you know, this guy, I'm pretty positive this is a black neighborhood and this is why he's going off about it. And the good thing about this is we have to have that separation sometimes in education for different types of people. I believe the what we're being taught in America uh, with, when you're a young person or youth is that you're taught the same type of thing that was taught to your parents, your grandparents, and so on to keep this kind of mentality alive where there's racism and there's issues, this and that, you know? It's this conflict and then petty little things you learn. You, the real stuff you don't learn. You don't learn about your bills. I mean, <laughs> you gotta pay your damn bills. You don't know how it is to freaking budget your money properly. 
you know, you don't know how to do these type of things, but they want you to learn how to sit back and learn about perverted crap as a kid, and then if it's just what they teach you when they're little, then when they're getting teenage ages, this is where I think uh, people like Matt Walsh always talk about the, the transgender change thing. They're teaching that in school, and that's not good either. So it's just let someone be themselves and let them learn real life things. I'll read some of this for you. It says, after a bit, a person's vagina becomes moist and slippery. And the clitoris becomes hard. After a bit, a person's penis, penis becomes erect, stiff, and larger. Sometimes a bit of clear fluid that may contain a few sperm comes out of the tip of the penis and makes it wet. Can we, sir, I'm sorry. Is there, was it something I said? (laughs) Was it something I said? If you don't want to hear it in a school board meeting, why should children be able to check it out of the school system? See, we have perverts that are perverting our kids. And you all sit back small in your chairs and celebrate diversity, equity, and inclusion, but you don't want me to read it so you can hear it. Why? Does it bother you? Yes or no? So, just I'm stopping it there for a second because here's what I believe. I believe that the reason why they don't want to hear it is because they know um, it's a brainwashing tool. It's a way to get kids either uh, on a sexual mindset, have them be victims to people who are predators, as well as uh, just make them uh, sexual deviants. And this is uh, an outrage. This should be something that, I mean, just it opens the floodgates to so many other things. Next, they're going to be, you know, to complaining about things being taught in science because someone knows how to make, you know, gunpowder or something, you know, or mustard gas and things like that. So, I mean, this is horrible, but what it says is that there's a hidden agenda to what they're trying to teach people in the community. The new, the youth, like I always say, is the future. So, by teaching these kids this type of stuff, you get another future that's way more perverted than the one we got right now, running around in society. So, yeah, this is this is bogus. You can't answer that question. You want to know why? Because politically speaking, you can't say that it's wrong. You probably are a Christian man. But many Christians today have become more Democrat than Christian. Some Republicans have become more Republican than Christian. I'm not trying to win an election. I don't get my talking points from the RNC or the DNC. I get my talking points from the B-I-B-L-E, from the Bible. And you don't want me to read the filth because it exposes the truth. How dare you tell me to stop reading it? If you don't want to hear it, why should the children have to see it? Pastor, your time is is, time is up. Thank you. That makes you. So, you know that's the the clip part of the clip I wanted to play, and it's just you know there's a lot more to it, a little bit more to it, where he sits there and he talks about, you know, pretty much he just talked about the whole thing. It's wrong for the kids to see it. You know, they don't want to have nothing to do with the book. It's, it's pretty much some form of manipulation of from the higher-ups onto the main populace, the regular citizens of the society, where you want to brainwash the future. And, I think, and this is what I'm talking about, protecting the future, helping future. This is not helping. This is causing more of a problem. We need less drug dealers coming out of schools, less gangbangers, less uh, bullshit. You know, there's people that get out, got a steal, and then life hits them so hard they end up falling back on their bum or homeless or something because they're not getting the proper education. There's things I know now, and they used to say I was dumb back when or whatever, even though I was some semi smart on a lot of shit. But they say, oh, you're dumb, you know, all this crap. But now there's things that I talk about, and people be like, oh, really? I am? Like, this is common knowledge. How do you not know this? It's because of shit like this. 
be putting the wrong things in the school system and trying to educate people on things that are not logical, factual, or just doesn't make any plain sense at all. And, you know, something like sex or violence and certain things shouldn't be in the school education system. And, yeah. Okay, and this is another news clip, you guys, of um, pretty much a stool education system uh, going against us, the American people. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Attorney General Garland, on October 4th, you issued an unprecedented memo that involves the Department of Justice and the FBI and local school districts, local school boards, nothing like it in our country's history. It was based, you testified, on this letter from the National School Board Association that we now know the White House was involved in writing. They've retracted the letter. They've apologized for the letter. They say they regret the letter, but you won't retract the memo and said earlier that you have no regrets. And you've defended yourself repeatedly today before this committee by saying, well, you're focused on violence. But now, of course, we've seen the memo from your own Justice Department advising state and local and other prosecutors about all of the different federal causes of action that they can bring against parents that are not about violence, they're about harassment and intimidation. I'm looking here at this memo. It identifies no fewer than 13 possible federal crimes involving harassment and intimidation, including making annoying phone calls. Now, this is all about, uh, uh, if I remember this one right, this is the one where, um, the guy, the school had some kind of assembly teaching uh, about transgenders, and the very next day, uh, a boy came in and, and raped his daughter, which was 10 or 8 or something like that. And she went to the bathroom, and he was in there pretending to be a girl and so forth. And so the dad went to the school board meeting, and then he was arrested at the school board meeting for speaking his mind and his truth about... Um, how wrong all that was. And so, you know, this is the trial or whatever. Do you think a parent who makes a phone call to a school board member that she has elected, that that school board member deems annoying should be prosecuted, General Girl? No, I don't. And the Supreme Court has made quite clear that the word intimidation with respect to the constitutional protection is one that directs a threat to a person with the intent of placing the victim in fear of bodily harm or death. Prosecutors who investigate these cases know the Supreme Court. This is a, a, a very famous uh, case. Pro prosecutors do, but but parents don't, General Garland. Do you, do you think that a parent... You see, this guy here, he's, he's reading this crap. He's trying to make parents look, look bad. And so the old guy is speaking up for parents. The thing right here that's... The, the most demented part of this whole thing is you can tell they don't really give a shit. Look, this guy right here, he's just sitting here with this douchebag look on his face like, oh, I gotta stand here like a rock and pretend to be the dude from Heroes and no opinion or whatever. But, went off topic. My point is that if the people don't have representatives to speak for them, there's no way that we should rely on a government that's supposed to already be speaking for us, but none of us is being heard. And this is something that needs to be paid attention to very closely. Because if we're not being heard when we're trying to put our children in a place to learn and get educated, you know, but yet they're getting violated, then this is a place where we have no true voice. You know, if parents can't speak up about the protection of their own children, then we have no true voice. And that's the one to sign. Who looks at the 13 different federal crimes that your Justice Department has identified they might be subject to and prosecuted for, like making annoying phone calls. Do you think that they're going to feel that they're welcome to speak up at a school board meeting? How about this one? They could be prosecuted for using the internet, I guess that would be Facebook, in a way that might cause emotional distress to a victim. Is that a, is that a crime of violence? Senator, I haven't seen the memo that you're Why talking haven't about. Why have not you? And I don't, I, 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 even from the description, it doesn't sound like it was addressed to parents. 
I didn't see no, that. No, it wasn't addressed to parents. It was addressed to prosecutors. That's the problem. Why haven't you seen the memo? I, uh, I don't know why I haven't. I don't look at every. I have. I do not get every memo that every. So what's going on right now? If you ever watch Harvey Birdman, the other dude is saying, "Did you get that thing I sent you?" And this guy here is like. No, I don't look at everything. I don't know if I got that thing I sent you. And with the other dude, like, why haven't you got the thing I sent you? And then he's sitting there like, oh, I don't know. I don't read memos. And blah, blah, blah. Even though we thought we lived in the 21st century, and you don't need memos, you just get emails. The U.S. attorney uh, sends out. But I, if you're wait, wait, wait a minute. Don't, don't, I, I, don't, I just want to be sure I understand this. this. This is a memorandum that collects 13 different federal crimes parents could be charged with. It has United States Department of Justice on the top of it. And you're telling me you haven't seen it? Who's the memo from? See, here you go again. You're doing the Harvey Birdman, uh, Peter Hippopotamus thing. And he's like, did you get the thing I sent you? And see, now he's holding up the thing I sent you. And he's supposed to say, did, you didn't get the thing I sent you? You know, it's, this, is, this is what's going on right now. I'm trying to break down this type of news type of thing for you. It's really Congress type stuff. So, you know, you guys probably don't understand uh, bureaucrat language. You know, they're speaking of bureaucrat and knees. Okay. So... Yes. <clears throat> the United States Department of Justice, United States Attorney for the District of Montana. I have not seen a memo from the District of Montana. You see what this old dude is doing right now? He's saying, I didn't get that thing I sent you. First he's like, what does it say? And he's like, no, I don't know. I haven't got that. You know, I don't got anything like that. You know, I didn't get the thing you sent me. And this is what's going down. Yeah, no, not high enough priority for you? Not, that's not the question. I don't. It is the question. Answer my question. Is it not a high enough priority for you when you're threatening parents with 13 different federal crimes? I These aren't crimes of violence. You've testified today. You're focused on violence. That's not what your U.S. attorneys, they work for you. That's not what they're saying. You haven't seen it because it's not a high enough priority or what? Question of priority. No one has sent me that memo, so I haven't seen it. What I do you mean no one has? So you keep saying, then now they're back again. See, it's going back again. Did you get that thing I sent you? And he's like, I didn't get that thing I sent you. And you know, this is what's going on. This is like leak law number 101. This is what law is, is pretty much. They say, did you get that thing I sent you? And you say, no, I didn't get that thing I sent you. And this is because you're being sued or because it's some kind of lawsuit. And you know you're going to lose. That's probably what's going on right here. But he didn't get that thing he sent him, apparently. And then dude want to know why he didn't get that thing he sent him. You know, it's crazy shit. Since you remember, you run the United States Department of Justice, do you not? There are 115,000 employees of the Department of Justice. Indeed, and you are in charge of every one of them. And this I was a sufficiently important case that you issued a memo. You, over your signature, issued a memo involving the FBI and the Department of Justice in local school boards, local school districts. Your U.S. attorneys are now threatening prosecution with 13 different crimes, but it's not a high enough priority for you. We got lost in the mix. I'll send again. Yeah, he's like, now after all that he's saying, you lost it. You just happened to leave. You know, he's trying to tell him all this shit that's going down. And then he said, look, man, how did you just lose this, man? You just lost it and, and, and mixed up in paperwork and stuff. And now he's going to, you know, tell you some story about how he didn't get the thing he sent him. Okay, it doesn't make any sense. This is, this is the longest. If this was Harvey Birdman, you'd be laughing. But this is actual American uh, justice. Good old American justice. I've never seen that memo. It was That's what concerns me, me General Garland. Well, it wasn't sent to me. I hope you will assure your constituents that what... See, he said it wasn't sent to me. The other guy's like getting pissed off because he know he sent him that thing. He know he sent him the thing. And this fool won't give him the thing. And this is messed up because all this thing is about parents not being able to say what they want for their kids in the school board. So pretty much they can say anything. Parents had no rights. Kids had no rights. Viva la France or something. I don't know. What we are concerned about here is violence and threats of violence. That only leads That's me to conclude, way. General That's Garland, all I can conclude from this is either that you're not in control of your own department or that 
more likely what I think to be the case, is that you knew full well that this is exactly the kind of thing that would happen. When you issued your memo, when you involved the Department of Justice and all of its resources, and the FBI and all of its resources, and local school boards and local school districts, you knew that federal prosecutors would start collecting crimes that they could use against parents. You knew they would advise state and local officials that these are all of the ways parents might be prosecuted. You knew that that was the likely outcome, and that's exactly what's happened. And we're talking about parents like Scott Smith, who's behind me over my shoulder. This is a father from Loudoun County, Virginia. Here he is at a school board meeting. He was forcibly restrained. He was assaulted. He was arrested. Why? Because he went to an elected school board meeting. He's a voter, by the way. He went to an elected school board meeting to raise the fact that his daughter was assaulted, sexually assaulted, in a girl's restroom by a boy. This is what happened to him. Now, you testified last week before the House that you didn't know anything. Yeah, this is, like I said, this is the story. That guy in the photo back there, like he said, he got attacked. And, you know, by stool board or PTA people, okay, because his, the daughter was raped in the girl's bathroom in the stool, but after a, a day where they were promoting transgenders. And so the boy came in dressed like one and molested this girl or raped her or whatever but it's horrible man so this is the whole fight of it so it's really more now of a, a situation where it's the LGB or a movement thing but it's still the fact that here's a parent sticking up for his own flesh and blood and you want to deny that parent to say to and do what they're supposed to do to control the situation or b bring some kind of honor back to his daughter in a way. You know, it took away his, her honor or whatever. So, yeah, it's just all messed up, you know. ...about this case. I find that extraordinary because the letter that you put so much weight on, the letter that's now been retracted, it cites this case. It cites Mr. Scott's case directly. There's a news article cited in the letter. It's discussed in the letter, but you testified you just couldn't remember it. Maybe this will refresh your memory. Do you think people like Scott Smith, do you think parents who show up to complain about their children being assaulted ought to be treated like this man right here? Parents who show up to complain about school boards are protected by the First Amendment. Do you think that they ought to be prosecuted they in the different ways them. that your U.S. attorneys are identifying? If what they're doing is complaining about what the school board is doing, policies, curriculum, anything else that they want to, as long as they're not committing threats of violence, then they should not be prosecuted, and they can't be. Let me ask you about this. Several of my Democrat colleagues have to... Mm, he, he, he's, um, <laughs> I want to say something about that, but he's just making a point about how he can go about prosecuting uh, parents. And so the thing that's weird there is he's just naming certain things they should be prosecuted on. But I think if your kid is raped in a stool, especially by the fault of the stool, then I believe that there should be some kind of swing in every now and then, at least a punch in the face of some asshole. And so, yeah, that's just my opinion. Today, just today in this hearing, multiple times have compared parents who show up at school board meetings, like Mr. Smith here, have compared them to criminal rioters. You think that's right? You think that a parent who shows up at a school board meeting, who has a complaint, who wants to voice that complaint, and maybe she doesn't use exactly the right grammar, you think they're akin to criminal rioters? Do you agree with that? I do not, and I do not remember any senator here compare, making that comparison. Oh, really? These people are just like the folks who came here on January 6th and in, in, in the riot at the Capitol? I don't think it, they were referring to the picture that you're showing there. Well, I certainly would hope not. They were referring to parents who go to school board meetings. Mr. Smith is a parent who went to a school board meeting. I'll leave it at this, General Garland. You have weaponized the FBI and the Department of Justice. Your U.S. attorneys are now collecting and cataloging all the ways that they might prosecute. Okay, so with that one, it's just, like I said, the taking the rights away from parents. That's the way I feel when it comes to this part here is because this guy really did try to fight to get you know, honor for his daughter or respect back for, you know, maybe, you know, just straight up vengeance. But whatever it is, I don't think he was in fault. And I don't think anybody else would be either. And that's just my opinion.
Okay, so here's what the news says about that father who tried to protect his daughter. Now, Scott Smith, the father of the high school girl whose rape was covered up, came on this show last year to tell us this heartbreaking story. My daughter was sexually assaulted at the end of school in May of last year, and, um, you know, I went to the school board meeting, you know, to see what was going on. Another parent, activist, you know, approached my wife and started antagonizing her. Then I tried to tell the lady what had happened to my daughter, and she looked me dead in the face and said, that's not what happened. The next thing I know... See, now I have to stop it there. This is the part I wanted to talk about. So, this woman comes out of nowhere, and she decides it's a good idea to tell him, you know, like, it doesn't matter, that didn't happen type of thing. I'm so tired of that type of attitude from someone who doesn't know you. They don't know you, they don't know your family, but they're going to tell you you lying about your life, something that was actual fact. But that is annoying as all hell. These type of people should be banished from society because they're the ones that bring on the delusional thoughts of things that doesn't make sense that we all are supposed to accept now. So, I'm just saying, this is retarded. But, uh, this guy's story is very serious and it needs to be resolved in a way that it won't affect any more children and parents in the future. So, let's just hear. No, I'm getting touched from all over the place. The police are grabbing me and next thing I know, I'm tackled to the ground. Join me now, Scott Smith, the man you just saw, get tackled and arrested while trying to get in. And she's laughing, but, you know, because Tucker Carlson, I think, says something about uh, them working for a hidden agenda or hidden people or whatever. But that type of thing, she's laughing right when he starts to do his little live interview with her. And the situation isn't funny. It's not funny. These are American citizens. They're kids. And they're trying just to make sure that their children have a better life than they have in a lot of cases in America. So we can't have individuals laughing at the thing. We can't have a, a father being assaulted to speak up against the atrocities that happened to his daughter. This is outrageous. And that poor girl has to suffer a memory of being attacked by some idiot who wanted to have sex with her, so he decided to come to school dressed like a, a woman to get the advantage to get close to her to do that. And this is wrong. I mean, it should not be accepted. You know, it should be something that where you make that type of life situation later on in life, not in school time, uh, childhood lifestyle growth, you know, and make sense out of it. I'm trying to make it logical as possible, but if a kid ain't ready, it's like you want a kid to have a uh, girl have implants and all this right when she's like 11. What kind of purpose does that serve? You know, it's like, or do you want a guy to sit back and just pump himself full of steroids and start bodybuilding when he's like, like 13? It doesn't make any sense. So it's the same scenario with this whole thing. Let that be a grown-up person thing, not a juvenile, like preteen, you know, type of way. Uh, and even beyond that, I don't know, preschool or what the hell, I think the kid was eight, I don't remember. The answer is about the rape of his daughter on school property. The world truly is upside down. Also with me is Ian Pryor, executive director of Fight for Schools. Scott, now that you've seen um, bits and pieces of this grand jury report, it takes my breath away what they did to conceal the truth and to shuttle this kid on to commit other crimes. Your reaction tonight? You know, the, the grand jury report pretty much told us what we already knew. You know, my family's lived through this for almost 18 months now. Everything that was pretty much in the grand jury report, we've spoke out on, we've exposed, and... So you didn't have the emails, you didn't have the internal communication. Well, we had a few. See, that's, see, here we go. She done threw up the crap, she done said it. I mean, he didn't have the emails, meaning he didn't get that thing they sent him. I'm getting tired of this. How many times are they going to use that? Okay, you can use it in court, okay? If you get, 
a document is supposed to come to you and some crap from the other attorney, you just ain't got it. Now, if you ain't got it when court time comes and they're like, why don't you got it? They'll ask you, did you receive it? So if you received it, if you touched it, then it's automatic, you know, you fucked yourself pretty much. Or you got that thing they sent you that's going to help you win in trial. So, I don't know. It's, it's just all about the thing they sent you. Yeah. Um, and, um, you know, the fact that it, it didn't come out with any teeth, though. You know, there's nobody held accountable by name. You know, that whole report laid out a bunch of, you know, misdeeds, uh, criminal, you know, situations perhaps. And at the end of the report, you know, we get six recommendations of things that they should do better next time. You know, I, I hope that the grand jury's not done with their duty yet, and I hope that this has more teeth in it. I don't think they're done with this, Ian, at all. I mean, as a former criminal defense lawyer, uh, here's how the vice chair of the school board reacted. We're pleased that the special grand jury's extension investigation found no evidence of criminal conduct on the part of anyone with an LCPS, and not a single indictment was filed as a result of this lengthy process. Ian, is that an accurate portrayal of this report? Is this just now just over? Yeah, now it's up. See, okay, so either way it goes, if you're paying attention to this, it's just saying parents don't have the right to protect their own children. This is what this is all about. This guy literally was told by them arresting him and attacking him that he doesn't have any control or say over his own child. Now, the one thing that makes sense is that he went there to try to fight for his daughter. That's the one thing that makes sense. Okay, even though it's in our time period, it's supposed to look bad that someone fights, period. But no, this is what a man's supposed to do. That's that, you know, that uh, masculinity I was talking about that needs to come back. The father's being protected of the children, you know. Punching a sucker that disrespects your family, your woman, whatever. You know what I mean? This is the type of thing that should never have been vanished in the first place, regardless of, of petty little nonsense. You know, you can't go around and tell a woman, oh, uh, your flirting's offended me, but a guy said it's high and it offends a woman. It doesn't make any logic, you know? So, this is my point, it's just that a parent should always have the right to protect their child. And this is where I stand. I say we should start uh, having individual schools for individuals, um, communities that actually separate from the United States government public education system. Uh, we should have uh, schools that teach kids values and history in the fuller sense, not just the same history that keeps people uh, down and have more variety with teachers because whatever, however many amount of teachers there are, but have a variety. That way you don't have the same nonsense going on. How the teachers rotate between subjects, you know? And, you know, I just believe this will be a thing, to, once again, to put God back in the, church, in the school. You know, separation of uh, church and state, they want to say. But then there's a separation of school and God. And school was based around God, you know? And you got A for Adam, B for Bible, C for Christ type of thing. And it makes it perfect logic. Then you know, some other stuff that's chaotic based off of uh, uh, demonic, uh, demonic mentality of trying to pretty much just force things that's ungodly, unthoughtable as a child in their mind. You know, some kids need school to be an extinct place from parents that already force grown up things in their mind. And I'm just saying that. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about. Not an accurate portrayal, and I, I, I dare to say I don't think that the school board actually read the press release from the attorney general that said the grand jury has not been discharged. And so what I see when I look at this report, I don't see negligence, I don't see gross negligence, I see reckless indifference. And when you're looking at things like neglect of a minor, um, delinquency of a minor, contributing to delinquency of minor, recklessness is the standard. And so I also note that in there, going through all this behavior by the school administration, they also talked about the lawyer for the school. 
And they seem like they really wanted to indict him for tampering with a witness, but they don't have a tampering, a witness tampering statute in Virginia, so they said, we know. So this is just all messed up. You know, all the things are set up against this guy, and it just keeps piling up. So you got to look at him because he's like one of the first to be attacked behind uh, defending his daughter who was raped by a transgender individual or a person who was trying to be a transgender individual or pretending. I don't know. Okay, But the thing is it happened in the school system. And the thing about it is this guy's like, uh, you know, he's the guy you're going to follow if you want to protect your children. And this is what's going down. And so I'm just going to end it, but I'm just saying that this is some powerful stuff that needs to be looked at. They're doing this to the American people for a reason. They're trying to make your kids weak. If the future is going to be a war, and a lot of y'all talk about China, and a lot of you guys talk about what's going on up south of the border, but you got to understand there's a reason for all that. The reason to bring new people and new blood into the country. There's a reason to sit back and have a war that could eliminate the most usefulness of society. And at the same time, we have the right to try to protect what's ours, and that's where the children come in, and that's where parents should have the right to stand up for what's right. And that's the bottom line because SLK told you so. Peace.